Okay, uh, thank you for that uh, introduction, uh, David. In some ways, I think it's, it's a bit of an ask on a hot day at the weekend in June uh, when the British and Irish Lions are playing in New Zealand <laughs> uh, for you to come and listen to the clerk to the council talking about planning. But we'll see how we get on. Um, the other thing I, I kind of observe about uh, conferences these days, I'm sure it won't be like this here, is that uh, very often you, you find there's somebody at the front talking uh, and uh, behind them there's some PowerPoint slides that's possibly vaguely related to what they're talking about but possibly with far too many words on them. And then there's a group of people sat in front who were on the internet probably not paying any attention whatsoever. <laughs> So I've, I've got the sort of tall order this morning of not only being the clerk to the council talking about planning, uh, but you've all, you're all wired to the internet watching the British and Irish Lions. <laughs> um, so we'll see, we'll see, by the way, what's the score? <laughs> we'll see how we get on. The other thing I ought to say is that I'm acutely aware that we're being filmed this morning uh, to produce some kind of... Uh, informative video and it's entirely possible that in the next few minutes I might say something political, heretical or something that just doesn't make sense uh, but I hope you might at least get a 10 second clip out of what I'm about to talk about that you can use. I also need to offer an apology and two thank yous at the start. The apology is that I, unfortunately I have a clash today so I won't be around for the whole conference uh, which is a shame, but uh, I will disappear. It's not a commentary on anybody who's going to speak later, I promise you. Uh, the two thank yous are this. The first is to the churches together in all Lincolnshire, because I think it's a fantastic um, opportunity to bring people together uh, for what I hope would be the start of a conversation about what it means to build community and about how all of us, statutory agencies, local authorities, uh, and the community itself can have this conversation about what is it that should galvanise us to work together uh, to build strong and cohesive communities in our area. The second uh, thank you is a, a more local one uh, to many uh, faith and church organisations in North Kesteven who work very closely with us as a local authority, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, partnership around defining what we do. It's really important to us to, to have that voice in terms of our vision and priorities for North Kesteven, uh, but also in terms of the services that you provide, either in partnership with us uh, or for the community more generally. And again, that uh, helps to meet need right across our district and is incredibly important to us. Um, Apart from that, the chaplaincy service you provide to our staff and our members as well is incredibly important. Anyway, with those uh, sort of introductory remarks, uh, the other role I play is that of returning officer at elections. And there's some sort of poetic thing at this uh, moment after general election that after the Member of Parliament has spoken, the returning officer gets a say. That's not often the case. Usually the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> Returning officers only have power uh, for about 10 seconds uh, before the declaration is made uh, at an election. And sadly, if you look at the internet, you'll find that one or two returning officers declared the wrong result <laughs> on the 8th of June. But it was uh, really uh, uh, corrected, thankfully. Um, returning officers, of course, have been uh, working on elections for a very long time. And... Uh, I'm sure you're all very much aware of the 1872 Ballot Act piece of legislation that you must take to bed with you and read every night. But that was the introduction of secret ballots in our electoral process. And prior to that, uh, you'll find in the libraries and archives of our county uh, the poll book for various general elections uh, that predate 1872. And in those books, you can find out uh, who voted for whom, provided that they were qualified to vote. And uh, maybe it's because I'm an anorak or a returning officer or a local authority chief exec that I occasionally pick these things up. And I recently picked up a poll book for 1851, sorry, 1852, general election. You all remember that? Yeah. And in these books, they're published and they give uh, the speeches of the various candidates would you believe? 
and uh, they give a description of the community that uh, the election is taking place within. And the poll book for Lincolnshire for 1852, population at the time around about 400,000, electorate of course uh, a small portion of that at the time, uh, it described the community of Lincolnshire like this. Lincolnshire then is a purely agricultural county. Uh, the great majority, even of its urban population, engaged in or connected to tillage of the soil. Love the language in these things. Peaceful by profession, reserved by habit, slow to action. <laughs> Not sure about that one. Proverbially loyal. And, and realising the picture drawn up by the late Sir Robert Peel of a class noted for their patience and fortitude in adversity, their moderation in prosperity, their devotion to the crown, and their tried obedience to, police officers in the room take note, their tried obedience to, rather, their zealous cooperation with the law. Um, so that was the way that the community of Lincolnshire was described 165 years ago at the general election. And I kind of wonder whether it's, uh, some of it's obviously out of date in terms of the way it describes the county, uh, but a sense of peace, commitment to the rule of law, and that sense of a community at, uh, at peace with itself, uh, maybe is something that we ought to, to bear in mind. So, I haven't even used a slide yet, have I? But we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I wonder, therefore, if we were to articulate some principles this morning that underpinned the concept of building communities, the first one might be this, that we need to understand the backstory. Everything has context, doesn't it? We need to watch the prequel. And understanding that sense of history roots our identity in place and begins to define what we are as a community and how we work together. And uh, I, I draw on no lesser authority in this than Winston Churchill, who, when he was asked the secret of statecraft, said this. He said just two words, study history. Yeah. I wonder, therefore, the first principle that we need to understand in building communities is that, that we need to understand the backstory. Of course, Churchill said a lot of things about history, and one of the things he said was that history will be kind to me, for I intend to write it. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about planning in a moment, uh, the central Lincolnshire context, but before we do that, with the leader of North Kestevan District Council in the room, I have to talk about North Kestevan, ladies and gentlemen, so we'll do a little bit of that before we move on. Uh, just to give a bit of context, really, to where we're going. It's North Kestevan as a council champions communities, has this strong sense of vision uh, for 100 flourishing communities. This is quite disconcerting. You can all see the slide. I have to turn around. Um, and uh, I wonder when we begin to think of that, what it, what it draws to mind. What is a flourishing community? How do we define it? Uh, could be something which is healthy, safe, cohesive. In fact, North Kestevan is the safest community in the country, would you believe? It has been for the last three years. Again, police officers in the room take note, or take a bow on this occasion. Um, that sense of healthy, safe, cohesive, sustainable communities. Perhaps we might uh, imagine that a flourishing community might be one with high educational standards, and certainly large parts of Lincolnshire exhibit high educational standards, full employment, uh, high value, high wage employment, good living standards, uh, good infrastructure um, in terms of our uh, health, education, transportation infrastructure. Perhaps we might think beyond that in terms of relationship and social capital. Uh, the questions of connection within communities, how do we all relate to each other? The, the question of resilience, what happens when something goes wrong? How resilient are we? Str a strong sense of relational bonds that bind people together in a particular place. Or in these days, perhaps we need to broaden our sense of connection and community, because you're all watching the British and Irish Lions, aren't you, at the moment? Um, 
that sense that communities are now digital in some ways. That social media brings us together in different types of communities that aren't necessarily, necessarily geographical. However we define it, it's important to ask those sorts of questions, isn't it? And I guess part of this conversation is asking what is a flourishing community? Now we, North Kesteven, we champion that idea and that concept and as a local authority we galvanise our priorities and our services to deliver on that across a wide geographical space with around about a hundred different communities. So I guess if we were to say, well, what's our second principle in relation to building communities? It might be this, that community is a vision thing. And we need to ask the vision question, and we need to ask the questions that underpin that around the health, the safety, the cohesion, and the sustainability of our communities. Now we could say a lot about that today, and I hope there will be some conversation about it. It's a question we're going to ask ourselves again as a local authority. What is it? Uh, as we move forward from here that, that defines our communities. Communities are dynamic and we need to keep asking the question, what is our vision? How do we ensure that they all continue to flourish? But of course it's really important to underpin that um, sense of vision with a sense of action. It's no good having something that sits on the shelf. It has to be backed up by a sense of uh, priority. And now You'll be horrified to see all those words on there and you'll be thinking he's going to go through each of those bullet points in fine detail. The good news is I'm not. I'm just making a broad point in a way that uh, for us as a local authority it's really important to align our resources to deliver the vision that the council has. And so if there's a third principle um, to all of this in terms of building communities it might be this, that we need to put our money where our mouth is. And we need to make sure that as organisations working together with local authorities, partners, the community, that we're actually um, making sure that the resources deliver the vision that we have. And of course in a, a world of declining resources that can be challenging. But the important thing is to keep the focus on the vision uh, and to align our resources to make sure we deliver it. And for us as a local authority that relates to our economy, our homes, uh, our communities, and our council and we're continually revising what that means and how we invest to deliver that. Might say a little bit more about those things if there's time. Right, the other thing that's really worrying for all of you is I haven't got a clock so um, <laughs> well David's in a nod when the five minute bell comes up. Um, who remembers the West Wing? Fans of the West Wing in the room? Yeah. yeah. Um, hello, Rob. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the West Wing. We're just talking about the West Wing. Uh, Toby Ziegler, remember him? Yeah. A character. Well, there's a there's a particular episode where uh, Toby is meeting with uh, a whole series of people from the arts. And they're having this debate, well, should the government be involved in investing in the arts? And uh, if so, what is that, what's that about? And uh, at one point in the discussion, he, he gets exasperated and he says, look, there's a connection between the progress of society and progress in the arts. That sense that uh, if we're going to build communities, we need to allow our creativity to take control of us at some level, to to express ourselves, to give ourselves permission to express what we feel through the arts. The expression of ideas, again the identification of place and uh, that sense of conversation within the community through art. Uh, North Kesteven as a council has long had a tradition of investing in its leisure and art services and uh, I bring this to you today because I think it's a really important aspect of what makes community tick. Now these, these pictures here are a demonstration of the Council's investment over many years in its leisure and arts portfolio, significant investment in recent years which is giving the community a series of assets within which that conversation can take place. National Centre for Craft and Design, important 
uh, feature of our community. So I guess if there's a, a fourth principle, I think we're counting, aren't we, the fourth principle that underpins this sense of building communities, it might be this, that we need to find ways for community to find their voice. And that can take place through the medium of the arts, through expression and creativity that that brings to us. Right, I think we should move on. North Stephen as a council uh, is committed to its vision, its priorities and to communities. And we'll come back to that at the end. For now, though, I'm going to do the planning bit and uh, talk about the wider central Lincolnshire piece. Uh, we are working in partnership together with uh, other local authorities, the City of Lincoln Council, Mr Mayor, um, and uh, with West Lindsay Council and Lincolnshire County Council. And over the last six or seven years, we've had what is effectively a joint local authority working across what is known as the central Lincolnshire area to establish clarity of purpose and vision for the area and to put into, into place a local plan which gives us a blueprint for the way that the, the area will continue to develop in the future. Now I asked one of my colleagues to give me a sense of scale and the leader of our council will laugh when he hears this because he's heard me use these kind of things before. Um, but how big is central Lincolnshire? And the answer was, it's, as, it's actually larger than, than the combined area of Birmingham, Liverpool, Manchester and London, all 33 boroughs. And uh, all of those places could fit inside central Lincolnshire. And uh, the population of those four urban areas is actually nearly 11 million. And the density is 41.4 people per hectare. And I say that because it's important, isn't it, that we understand our context. The density of population in central Lincolnshire is 1.4. 41.4, 1.4. And so much of the policy that gets made, I think, is, is made in the context of the 41.4. And we have a rural context, we need to respect that and our plans need to respond to the fact we're a sparsely populated area, many rural communities with the challenges that brings in terms of rural isolation, transportation and connectivity. So we've been putting this plan together for the last few years and the great news is that we have now adopted jointly as four, four authorities working together a local plan for the area. So that gives effect to a, uh, a plan for the next 20 years or so. Now population base as you can see is projected to grow over that period uh, just around about 302,000 now going up to 332,000 in uh, 2035 or so but uh, probably over the next 20 years another 40,000 people are due to come into our area. Um, you can see that that is a steeper increase than the UK population as a whole. The UK as a whole about 10% growth since 2001, 16% here and that trajectory of the 40,000 is a continuation of that kind of growth projection. So in the context of that um, uh, growth the local plan aims to, permit, to ensure that whatever we do is sustainable. We're providing a sustainable future for all across that area. And we've asked some critical questions about, well, how much growth does that imply in terms of housing and employment and infrastructure growth, and where does it go? And uh, what that shakes down to is a plan which has uh, a... Uh, a need of close to 37,000 homes over the next 20 years and uh, you can see where the balance of that is likely to go in our area. Now I appreciate some of you are here from the, the whole Greater Lincolnshire pitch. There will be plans like this across the whole county and the total number for Greater Lincolnshire over that period is around about 100,000. Now some of that growth reflects demographic changes, uh, the population continues to age, well, we get older every day I guess, but, but you know what I mean, the average age of the population is increasing, in fact in North Kesteven we're going to see the second largest growth in the over 75 
population anywhere in the country over the next 15 years. And uh, that means that we'll have more single person households as well and we need to factor that into our planning in terms of rural isolation. We also need to bear in mind that um, not only is the demographic picture changing but the way that we live is changing. 40 years ago the average house would have had 2.9 people in it. Not literally 2.9, <laughs> uh, but on average. And today it's about 2.3. So to house the same number of people, you can just do the math in your, in your head as to how many additional homes we need just to house the same number of people. Uh, for the economy to continue to be sustainable and to find the jobs that we need in our area, not just tillage of the soil, but these days... Uh, engineering and manufacturing, the visitor economy, the health and care economy uh, as particular sectors, um, the economy will need to grow at around about two, two and a half percent a year. So we need to be providing for uh, our resident population and for that growth as well to sustain the local economy. You can see the balance of that growth as well around about two thirds of it in the Greater Lincoln area. Now that, that includes about 40% of the West Lindsay and North Gustavan areas, 12% in Gainsborough, Sleaford and the rural areas, without dwelling on the detail of that too much. Now the factors we're taking into account in this, and the questions you might want to sort of ponder as we have this conversation today and beyond today, uh, are those. Uh, understanding need. Very often people say, no, we don't really need that. Surely we don't need to, to build at that rate. But understanding that picture is fundamental to grabbing hold of it and making sure the plan gives effect to it in the right way. Uh, factors around infrastructure and ensuring that we collectively pool our resources to deliver the healthcare, the education and the transportation infrastructure in particular that we need. Uh, the question of regeneration and uh, town centre regeneration, regenerating areas of industry that probably need to be equipped for the modern economy. All those sorts of questions we need to ask ourselves, making sure we get those plans right. And of course regeneration uh, must start with people. It always starts with communities. And we always ask the question, what is it that we need to do uh, to equip this community uh, to be a flourishing community? So there's some big questions around making that kind of plan happen. Uh, the policies within the plan are designed to achieve that and ensure that we do deliver on that aim uh, to deliver a sustainable future for everybody that lives, works and visits in the central Lincolnshire area. How are we doing, David? Five minutes. We better, better speed on. So the balance of that growth is in um, urban extensions in particular. And again, a key question for us today might be this. Well, how do we... Uh, ensure that those urban extensions, probably two or three thousand homes, how do we make those sustainable? Um, how do we ensure that we make them affordable? There's a strong need for 725 affordable homes per year. We heard earlier about um, the need for social housing and as local authorities, certainly the City of Lincoln Council, North Kisteve and our strong social housing providers and invest heavily in making sure that we are using the council's resources to deliver uh, homes of high standard to meet local need within the council's own stock. Community facilities we've touched upon already, they deliver a huge amount for us. Uh, we might throw into that mix, how do we provide for our faith communities within all of these uh, new developments? How do we ensure that we've got the, uh, the infrastructure uh, for the faith community, for the Christian church in particular in our area to operate within those new communities. Uh, how do we provide for a sense of place? We've got a historic city, a university city, driving the knowledge economy. We've got other urban centres, sustainable communities that provide services and employment opportunities. And at the heart of this, we've got a local government family that's committed to delivering on these sorts of plans over the next 20 years. And part of the question we as local authorities might want to ask you is, well, what is it that you think we should be doing? Give us some feedback, 
uh, and engage with us in terms of defining how we deliver this sort of plan over the next 20 years. I'm going to skip that one for a moment. I just talked briefly a moment ago about the employment profile of the area, just to emphasise that um, we are a mixed economy uh, in terms of public sector employment, 24%. I'll do a survey actually to see if we in the room mirror this, but um, I haven't got the, uh, the digital infrastructure to facilitate that with me this morning. Um, you can see there's quite a mix there in terms of the local employment market. Uh, whatever we do for the future needs to respect that, but we also need to ask ourselves in a world of greater automation where 50% of jobs may go over the next 20 to 30 years, what is it we need to do to equip our communities to play into a modern economy? Some numbers there around that, 15,000 new jobs projected over the next I keep saying 20 years, approximately 20 years. Um, the local enterprise partnership there mentioned 30% of the area's population, the Greater Lincolnshire area, is in this patch. Some of the projects that give effect to uh, investment opportunities to provide for that uh, employment base. Right, we're going to skip on through. I mentioned the visitor economy briefly because it's a, a sector that, that outperforms the economy as a whole. Uh, City of Lincoln is a major attractor for that in this part of the world. The coast, of course, is another key factor in the greater Lincolnshire picture. A local plan is focused on ensuring we can deliver for the visitor economy too. So, just in conclusion, uh, which might stimulate some thoughts for the rest of today and the conversation that flows from it. To emphasise, one of the things that really does need to underpin where we're going is this question of vision. As somebody once wrote that where, where there is no vision, they do. I hesitate to suggest which Bible verse that is. You will know <laughs> off the top of your head, won't you? Uh, is it in Joel? Something like that. Um, but it's true, isn't it? We've got to have a sense of vision about where we're going and that clarity of purpose that gives us confidence that we're doing the right things uh, for the community, for the people that live, work and visit in our area. Uh, the vision question. Uh, engagement is fundamental to this. And it might be that you've got ideas on how, what is the best way to engage. Um, we heard earlier about some of the challenges of that. That uh, getting people to attend and get involved with some of these discussions can be very challenging. Just, just recently we've turned that over quite a lot in our local authority and uh, we've got to get more people engaged. And the, the great news was that we had more than 3,000 people in our area engage in giving us really strong feedback through a survey about the quality of local services, about where the community should go and grow. Um, we had to use some tactics to do that. We got into school six forms and uh, with a captive audience we sat down with six formers in school as part of the curriculum to get structured feedback. Um, we have to go to where people are at, don't we? And uh, perhaps you've got some thoughts on how we might best achieve that uh, for the future as local authorities seeking to engage. Uh, this question of delivery, I hope I've conveyed that um, local authorities, we're trying to ensure that we do put our money where our mouth is. If, if you've got thoughts on that, let us know how we might deliver for you. And uh, fundamentally, it ends up being about uh, building the strong and cohesive communities that we need and ensuring that they are sustainable for the future. And I might sort of end with um, a trip back to 1852. Uh, does anybody know who the Poet Laureate was in 1852? It was, of course, Tennyson. It's a bit of a giveaway because it's a sort of Lincolnshire connection. And, um, yeah, I'm sure there have been other Poet Laureates since then, so other, other options are available, ladies and gentlemen. But in his uh, poem, Ulysses, uh, his character was looking back on his life and he said this, he said, Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. 
And it struck me that uh, to finish on a Lincolnshire note with reference to Tennyson, that's not a bad place to, to ponder. The sense that whatever the challenges are that we might face as communities, whether it be about investment or grappling with growth or trying to make sense of some of the things that uh, have happened recently uh, in some of our communities further afield, whatever that's about, it's not too late to start thinking about how do we build those strong and cohesive communities that will help all of our people to flourish. So I'm going to stop there, David. I've probably overrun my time, but I hope that's been informative and useful. Yeah.